Good evening everybody, how are you? Welcome to Monday, welcome to Making It Monday. I hope you're all well. I hope you've had a good weekend, yes. Uh, those that have got snow, I'm really sorry about that. Um, they did forecast snow in sunny Suffolk, but I think it sidelined us. So um, I'm rather hoping it stays that way. Um, yeah, so I hope you're all well. Um, I hope that uh, you're not uh, got any of these dreadful flu bugs that are going around and just general grottiness. Um, so we can say hello to a few people here. I've got lots of people watching already. Goodness me, that's crept up quite quickly. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, what's that, Abigail? Bring the snow here. I'll take it. Yes, Abigail loves a bit of snow. Uh, as such shows what sort of kid she was really. Uh, good evening to um, Jackie, to Christine, to Bridget and Rachel, to Julie on YouTube, to Maggie, oh happy birthday for the weekend Maggie, to Jackie and to Margaret and to Rebecca and to Jill and to Patsy and Lorraine as well over on YouTube. Got lots of people watching already. Um, so obviously I'm not going to say all your names. We'll be here all night and not make a thing. Um, oh, I had my little doll there and now you can't see it. Oh, there. <laughs> I had it on the edge of my machine. I thought you'd be able to see it. But... Hold on, let me just... Yeah, you can just about see it now. Do you know, I thought that was going to be in full view. Um, I didn't test it, obviously. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so good evening to everybody. It's lovely to see you. Lovely to have your company. And once again, we are making it Monday. We are making it our destination of choice for you, me and uh, everybody else that's watching. It's, it's a great time to get together, isn't it? And I know that in the comments you say hello to each other and you have little conversations, which is lovely. And I never seem to be part of it because it flicks up that quick. I can't be part of it. Sometimes I can catch a comment and sometimes I can. So he said it's bigger than I thought. Oh, well, it's just because it's nearer to you. If I was to bring it back to me, it, right, and that's that's kind of level with me now, Zoe. Ooh, let me bring it in. I'd never be good at TV, would I? It's obviously proportionate, but because it's right on the edge of my machine and closest to you, <laughs> it's going to look big. <laughs> That's just how it is. It's like all these things behind me. They're actually six foot tall. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, lovely to have you coming, like I say. So we're going to make um, Mimi. Mimi was inspired, really, because over the last couple of months, I've been delving into um, vintage a lot. Um, I met a lady in November uh, called Lisa Mattock. I think from memory um might not be lisa might be something else it perhaps come to me and um, perhaps adrian remember if she's here um anyway i met this lovely lady from australia and she was going on a forage a vi vintage forage in france and her work is based around uh, vintage fabrics and collages and just beautiful stuff really so it got me <coughs> excuse me it got me looking online at all the um uh who likes the project me 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 that's abigail um hi dd Dee Dee. uh Dee Dee's from australia and um so so yes it got me looking at french vintage fabrics and shops and uh, ephemera i suppose um and it's so inspirational i i, I can't quite define it but um i think once you see and you'll have seen them on my page here and if you're one of my online members you'll have seen it on my uh, online page as well my my facebook page there um and it's something that you know you can explore isn't it something you, you can explore so mimi is the result of that obviously very watered down that's because i don't have the time to do everything that I would like to do but you can if you've got the time of course I'm not assuming you're not as busy as me um, but um, you could go to town with this and if any of you caught me this morning on Lizzie TV somebody actually somebody asked what is that what is 
going on about Lizzie TV, what is that? If you go to my website, the, almost the first thing you come to on the home page is Lizzie TV. Um, and it doesn't show anything really, and it, it looks a, perhaps a little boring, but there, it's absolutely full of videos. And every single Monday at 9.30, I go live on Lizzie TV, and I'll show you the Making It Monday project for the week. So if you're around, it's only five minutes, literally, perhaps a bit more, but not much more. So if you're around on a Monday morning at about 9.30, um, you have to have a fresh browser. So it's no good um, it's no good sort of hovering on the website. I'm not sure it works like that. I'm pretty sure, and somebody can correct me if they like, um, I think you have to literally come in at 9.30 or just after to catch it live. It's, you know, it's not always user friendly and you can't comment. I've, I've complained, I've complained. But at the moment you can't comment but I do do a blog to go beside it so I always say you know go to the blog and um, tell me what you think um, because that's the only way I ever really get feedback with regards to what I do on, on the website so I'd really appreciate that um, so so that's yeah so that's what we're going to create tonight it's, it's, a, it's a really easy make I think your time could be taken up with embellishing okay and we'll talk about that when we get to that point um and you could go to town you could absolutely go to town with it um i've got my hot glue gun hopefully charged up and ready for action my hot glue guns i've seen better days and i need to get a, a new one really but on well, fingers crossed it's gonna work if it doesn't i'll i'll put pins in everything it'll work um so the other thing is is to realize that you need a fairly wide bottomed cotton reel or thread reel whatever you want to call it fiber reel um it's no good getting the slimmer gutterman ones they they probably wouldn't stand up i mean that this one is a gutterman one but i think it's a 500 meter one so obviously it's it's a bigger bottom uh we do like a bigger bottom um the one thing i do have in my stash is i inherited all my mum's embroidery threads i'm trying to see the other one that's back here you can see look it's got gold it's lovely isn't it my machines hate it right my machines hate it so i'm thinking well i can use it for my mannequins and in actual fact the way i have glued my trimmings on you don't actually glue the thread so I, that is still a usable reel of thread should i need a usable reel of white thread so either you're going to go for something that's empty or go for something that your machine hates <laughs> <laughs> like this and and use that i don't know why it's probably the user user error i'm not blaming the threads <laughs> well i am but there we are yeah so i've got a couple of things to talk about before we get on to that um it could be a pin cushion liana but i do you know what i a pin cushion actually is the last thing um, I'm, I'm thinking about. All I want is something pretty to go in my room. And you can see, can you see this one behind me? That's the one I made for the pattern. It just looks so pretty. And I'm, I'm not going to stick pins in it. I've got more pin cushions that I could shake a stick at. Um, and I just wanted to create something that I could put some vintage ephemera on. That's that's it purely selfish purely selfish um so there we are um oh so tracy over on youtube says i saw this on the website earlier and i love the look of it looking forward to trying it it's easy tracy <laughs> it's easy i think your main problem is going to be actually um embellishing it right so let's stop chatting away and let's um have a look on the overhead so this is the pattern. I hope you like the new um, layout of our Making It Monday patterns. I think they're really pretty. And this year is, is all about prettying things up a little bit. Um, a bit I'm not going to say romantic because I think, you know, I'm a bit past all of that. But <laughs> I think pretty, we can all do pretty. So I wanted it to look lovely when you um, when you downloaded it. I, want you to be, I wanted you to be pleased. I wanted you to uplift, uplift your spirits. Um, so it tells you on the front roughly what you want. I mean, we don't go into huge amounts of detail now. Uh, the one thing you do have right at the back is the template, which is just here. And I'll go through that in a sec. Now, um, the template itself, I might as well do it now, actually. Let's just move the pattern out of the way. 
the template itself you can see I folded it in half now it's all hand drawn sometimes when I um, and I talked about this on the live on Lizzie TV this morning sometimes when I draw things by hand um, it's I put it in my graphics program and I can manipulate it so it's absolutely 100% perfect with this one for whatever reason I don't know what I had my settings on but it was it's a bit it's a bit what I call crunchy so it's not as smooth as line as I would have liked it's also not necessarily um, equal both halves so I want you to consider um, cutting it in uh, sorry folding the pattern in half like this um, oh, oh, I'm not gonna let me find my other scissors um, and cutting out a folding in half so you know the neck piece is definitely half and although in the pattern I said cut out roughly if you do it this way you would need to cut pretty much on the lines and the only reason why I'm saying this is because I don't want you to put a back with a front and it's a, it doesn't fit so well um, it wouldn't be far out I'm going to talk a couple of millimeters that's all but the the reason why I'm sort of suggesting this is because you will get a perfectly symmetrical body OK, so that is absolutely symmetrical. Now, it's beautiful, isn't it? Um, and um, the the seam allowance I've given you is is not Look, you can see. Actually, that's a good example. It, it wasn't symmetrical, so it's cut it off. And I don't mind that if you're using calico or you put your fabrics right side together, it matters not a jot. OK, in the whole grand scheme of things. So um, I, I'm going to give you that as an example of what you could do, actually, rather than this is what, um, it, you know, it should be perfect. It's, I know it's not. I wanted to cover that. Um, so let me just put that to one side. Um, I'm going to get my iron on my calico and we will iron this at least um, once more just to make sure that... Um, when we when we've finished our piece of work it's almost like going to be like a little piece of mini art that the body is not creased up and scrunchy that it's um, it's lovely and use best press as well if you can um, oh there's Jackie Thomas there um, Jackie Thomas a happy birthday to you happy happy birthday let's all wish Jackie Thomas my uh, my absolutely right hand person uh, as well as Kath, <laughs> a very happy birthday. And she got sport rotten today. Her boys took her out for lunch and uh, absolutely marvellous. And uh, yeah, so lovely, 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 lovely. Do, lo do like a good birthday. Right, so that's now a little bit better. It's a little bit crease free. What we need to do is to transfer the darts. Now, I thought I would show you how I do that. So I'm putting my template over the top and I'm literally putting my pen through the bottom of each line. Don't worry about making great big holes because you need to, because even though you've I've done this on my wool mat and, and um, it's uh, too spongy really. So let's just get rid of that for the moment. So if you've done right sides together, this is the wrong side of your fabric. So on the back, because to get the shape, we need to do this back and front. You need to put your dots in. OK. Now, if you've never done dressmaking, this is going to be a really good lesson for you, because actually this is almost identical to what you would do if you're making a, a blouse or something with a, a dart like this. So fold your fabric. I mean, it, with, with a dressmaking pattern, you might be a little bit more careful. Well, that's all I'm going to say. So fold it in half, find your dots. There's a dot here and there's a dot here. And I just want you to just be brave and draw um, a sort of a curvy line. Yeah. Um, and then on the other side. So don't forget, this is all on the wrong side. So if you want to, you could use a pencil. You, you don't have to use a heat erasable, ball, not, not necessarily. Um, and when we stitch these, we will stitch them as you can see. We're not going to open that up. <laughs> It'll look a bit strange, wouldn't it? We're going to stitch them folded. So there's one. And the great thing about calico, of course, is that 
it's perfect for a, a mini dummy like this um, but also it doesn't matter what side so you know use a batik same sort of thing so there's our second dart please don't measure please don't measure just go for it just be happy be relaxed just enjoy the process and be brave don't go too far i would say quarter an inch is your absolute maximum on this okay you can see what i'm doing i'm literally just drawing a curve so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stitch these darts in and then we will oh who else's birthday is it uh oh let me see does it say tell me again tell me again whose birthday somebody said birthday twin happy birthday twin oh i've missed it i'll say it again <laughs> i'll try and keep a lookout yeah so the first thing we're going to do is stitch these darts and then we're going to decorate our fabulous um, mannequin so um let's um get the mannequin in there we are look isn't it it's so pretty so pretty i love it um who was it i haven't got it yet i haven't got the, the name yet maybe i'll see it on facebook no all i've got is happy birthday twin <laughs> i'll see it in a minute perhaps it's janice I don't know anyway um so this is the thread we're going to use I'll, I'll pop it down there so we can keep an eye on it um uh, I'm, I'm still waiting for the name to come up so i can wish them a happy birthday right so uh regular stitch length i've got it on um uh let's have a look I, i'm gonna say 2.4 is a little bit of a lie because i've put whacked it up to 2.6 just so we don't spend a lot of time on this um, I don't want you to, mm, I'm going to say, don't worry with the back stitch, but if you're really pedantic, and I know some of you will be, um, then you do a back stitch. But we've got to remember what we're making, guys. We're making a mannequin to put our lovely stuff on. It's lovely stuff. Uh, what's this? Fee says, hello from a blooming freezing night in the motorhome. Oh no, oh, it's got heating. Yeah, um, well, people often ask me, oh, has your motorhome got heating? Well, yes, 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 central heating, it's lovely. It's probably warmer at, in the motorhome than it is at home. <laughs> so, um, yes, by all means, do a back stitch, okay? Just, you know, you do you and I'll do me. And that's what you're going to end up with, okay? A lovely, lovely shape. And obviously, you know that's the top because you've got the neck. Uh, I did debate about that to be honest I did have a little think and I thought no it does need that shape so we know what's top and bottom so again just follow your line that you drew and if, like I say if you want to do a back stitch do a back stitch oh oh it's Jill it was her 43rd birthday Saturday can anybody remember being 43 I'm just going to put that out there <laughs> 43 well actually I can remember what I was doing when I was 43 that's that's another story for another day <laughs> oh well, happy birthday Jill I didn't know otherwise I'd have wished you one. Oh dear me <laughs> you know on the day obviously on the day right so um there we go so that's given our mannequin a lovely lovely very very hourglass figure and yet again it's been a good 30 years since I've seen one of those on me. <laughs> but you can live in hope. You can live in hope. <laughs> After my 100 skips a day for February, I am absolutely living in hope. I'm sure. I don't know about, I don't know about an hourglass, but <laughs> I don't know what. I've probably been bow-legged or something by the end. <laughs> yes, so there we are back and front now if you want to you could ignore the back and just leave the back plain um the one i did this one here this is the first one i created and and literally i left it plain um because at the end of the day possibly you're only going to see the front on the one i created for the pattern I used some fabulous lace. I'm going to show you what I cut up in a minute to get that. And I did do it back and front. Um, so again, you might want to do that. It looks lovely. It looks like an apron, doesn't it? Oh, Karen says she can remember 43. She was in a lot of pain because she'd had a hip replacement. Oh, my Lord. 
So, um, yeah, so you can see how I've decorated it. But I, like I said, we, we, um, I did use some lace. So we'll have a look at that. We'll have a look at that and make sure that stands up. So the lace I used came off a vintage table. I'm going to say that. I always said that this morning. A vintage tray cloth. This is the most gorgeous damask. It is so soft, it's beautiful. I can't even tell you how beautiful that is. And the workmanship, this is all hand crocheted um, cotton lace. It's beautiful. And that's what I used on my first, uh, my sorry, my second mannequin. And I literally just cut. Let me just find the place I cut. So I just cut it, look, along here. Okay, now none of this will go to waste because I can use this for other projects. So don't ever feel uh, you sh I shouldn't cut into things. And I understand if this was my great grandma's, I possibly couldn't cut into it. So by buying um, from charity shops or car boots or eBay or Etsy or anything like that, it doesn't have any emotional attachment. So please cut it up. Everybody's reminiscing about when they were 43. Uh, oh, Lynn says when she was 43, she lost a lot of weight. And, uh, oh, I divorced him. <laughs> oh, I see the weight. Oh, Lynn, that is so funny. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> we shouldn't laugh, should we? Bless him. Um, so tonight I've got a vintage crocheted, oh, just look at this, a cotton doily. And do you remember you would have used these or your grandma would have used or your mum, you'd have all used this um, and put your teapot on it or your plate of sandwiches. But you know what? It will make the perfect, perfect skirt for my um, lovely mannequin. So I'm just going to pop it over the top and Oh, look at that. I mean, it's just dreamy. So I'm going to just snip it where I think it needs to be snipped. And, um, you know, for those of a squeamish nature, I do understand if you think, oh, this is sacrilege, but I'm not going to use it. I'm, it has no emotional attachment to me whatsoever. So come on guys cut these pieces up make something beautiful that you can look at every single day okay so look at that now if i turn that around that is delicious i'm not going to do the back because i'm it's time thing it's a time thing now um what you could do now is to stitch this down here so it stays in place for when you actually um that, you know complete your mannequin so i think i will run that under the machine just so it holds because you can be quick but then sometimes you can be quick and regret it um, it's best to, to to err on the side of caution as they say so you're putting this on the right side and you're just literally going to stitch i don't know an eighth of an inch in all the way around just to secure it okay i mean you could if you wanted um you could if you wanted uh, when it's all made you could add a, a proper skirt and just attach it by hand right around the waistline um i'll leave that for you to decide but one thing you need to do is try to level it up now isn't that the most gorgeous thing so try and level it up so make sure that when you stitch this other side that it's sitting in the right place my machine sounds very funny <laughs> very odd <laughs> perhaps it needs an oil i don't know if juke, this jukey would have an oil actually uh right so is it stitched yeah mm, okay there we are so i can trim all these bits if i want to just to make it um just i suppose just a bit neater it's not not crucial but just follow the line of your your outer i mean you can turn it around look and and see where you need to cut just to neaten it up there we go okay so let's go back to the overhead again because we'll talk about what else we can do all right so there's our skirt so you could obviously like i say do the back but we're going to put some ribbon on here and this time I want to use quite a nice uh, sort of an oyster colour I suppose. Um, let's just see if I can get that off. Yeah, that's OK. Um, so that's going to go across there, but I'll do that when when she's made up. 
but it could be your guide. For instance, I really, really love this. And I thought that I might put that on her on her on her chest so once again you can cut all the way around um, you can do this a lot neater than me you can hand stitch it on you can glue it down um, you could pop it under your sewing machine you could free motion it down you could use just your regular stitch um, to stitch it down but it's good to do this before you stitch it together because before you stitch it together you've got an option uh, once you stitch it together you lose your options okay you can uh, you can probably hand stitch it but it's not so easy to do but doing it this way just it's just easier don't forget your seam allowance so don't get any of your lovely embroidery on the seam allowance so for instance that could go like that literally like that and, and you could cut this off a little bit. We could bring it up. I think that looks lovely. Maybe trim that off a little bit um, because obviously we, our ribbon is not going to cover that particularly well. So again, we can, we can put that on. I might pop that under the machine. Um, we've also got things like um, buttons. So we've got lots of buttons and ribbons and things like that. So I'll open that so you can see a little bit better. And these can either be glued on or you can, st obviously you can stitch them on. So you might want to, you know, place a few little um, beads, uh, sorry, buttons on there. You could um, just be careful of your seam allowance, like I say, because you don't want to stitch um, any of these anywhere near the seam allowance. Maybe, maybe you'd want a heart. I'm not sure I would. Um, but the lots of little bows, so you could add bows to it like that. And maybe that's something we could hot glue on when we've, we've made it up. Um, you could do French knots. So you could have this on here and then maybe do some French knots up here. Um, you know, it, the world is your oyster. I've got some lovely little faux pearls and that could be hot glued down on her neck like that once we stitch it together. Oh my goodness me, I've got this coloured lace as well. That could go on there. You know, it's just, there's no end of things that you can do. I'm just looking through all of my stash. But I think, first of all, I'm going to stitch this little piece down. Obviously, we've got shapes because of the dart. So I just want to make sure that my dart is um, open, if you like it, that it's lying open um, so we can... Um, sort of uh, make it make advantage of that female um, shape which is which is what it needs so I'm going to see how my machine will take it I don't know why it's making a funny noise I might have to abandon ship if, um, if it doesn't behave <laughs> now of course you can um, use your quilters tape to hold this down you could use blanket stitch you could do a lovely sort of free motion. I'm literally going to just use my regular foot, move the, I mean, some of this is going to go into the seam allowance. So I might chop, I might chop that or I might try and move it across a little bit. So um, see how you go. Obviously, I'm always stuck for time. This is not Blue Peter. I don't have one I did earlier. Um, so you know it's um it's it's what it is but at the end of the day like i said it's something that's going to sit in my room and whoever made this piece of embroidery well it's being loved and reused again hasn't it it's not like it's being thrown away or unloved we're going to put it on our beautiful mannequin so there we are. Oh, my machine was perfectly fine. Yes, Sue, you can. Yes, that's what, and that's the other thing I was going to say. You could machine embroider. So, um, put, so obviously you're going to put some stabiliser underneath, but you could take it to your machine. It doesn't even have to be uh, a flower or anything specific like that. It could be, you could do um, like a row of fancy scallop stitching across the bottom of her body there. Anything like that would look amazing, but do stabilize your fabric. So I think 
that's enough for me for the moment because obviously um, I'll be stuck for time but I want because I want to do some hot gluing with her and we've got to stitch up the bottom and stuff her so I'm putting right sides together and what I really really suggest you do is is to pin because she's got some strategic bits hasn't she she's got that shaping she's got the, the neck like that you want to keep to that shaping so you don't want your pieces to move so just go round her and pin at strategic points and you're going to go round all the curves and you're leaving her flat bottom here open for stuffing okay it's um, plenty of room but um i just like this when it's a something that needs to fit properly it's a bit like the um, children in need um, hugging a bag they've got to be stitched correctly on top of each other okay so now we're going to stitch around now I've said in the pattern the it's a quarter inch seam allowance but I really wouldn't give it any thought of what you're stitching you know your seam allowance um, I would say your minimum is an eighth of an inch and your de maximum is definitely a quarter but I don't want you to m measure it or get hung up about it and just oh sorry 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 Mimi <laughs> um, I just want you to do your best you could draw a line if you like because there's as I said there's some sort of strategic bits like the neckline but this is where I'm more likely to do an eighth of an inch <laughs> than a quarter inch. Um, yeah, so that's all you're going to do. And this is all the stitching there is, really. I mean, well, it, I suppose it depends whether you want to do lots of hand stitching. Um, but yeah, so anybody, that, even if you've never stitched before, you'd be able to make this. Um, you know, your grandchildren could make this, your children could make this. Um, under supervision of course but um, it's such an easy little make it really is and there's this you know for inspiration go and have a look online at some of the the other creations that people have made and you'll you I'm sure you'll be inspired so that's our right and wrong uh, sorry <laughs> right side stitched together our wrong sides facing out if you want to um, iron your uh, marks away by all means but they, they don't show through so you're going to snip into your neck nicely don't get too carried away you're going to take the corners off again just it's going to be stuffed so be careful because it's um you know it's quite delicate and then you can snip around um the shoulders if you want um, like I say, it's going to be stuffed and these curves will come out. Um, again, around here, you can see it's about an eighth of an inch seam allowance there. So <laughs> at the shoulders, it's like nearly works well, a good quarter inch. So in certain places, give it a little um, snip and that way your curves will come out beautifully. And then we're just going to turn it through. I might have to get my uh, pokey tool, my turning tool and then we come to the fun part of stuffing and i had to rescue this my stuffing from millie the dog she thought that was great fun she was pulling it all out of the bag so some of it's a little damp <laughs> so let's get my returning tool my harry potter wand and just work that in so you want the curves of the shoulders nice you want that neckline to come up a little bit so it gives it a little bit of definition so it's not massive can you see but it's enough to make it distinguished or distinguishable and then just push your curves out not too much it doesn't you don't have to work at it too hard because your stuffing is going to deal with that okay stuffing so I've just got a normal toy stuffing here and I do recommend you use hemostats or um, I do have <laughs> I do have these massive um, thingamajigs what are they called you know them 
and actually this is for feeding food to lizards yeah i know but it's a lovely big size and it really gets in up a length can you see it goes right up the length of the body whereas this won't necessarily so that will come into its own in a minute what are they called <laughs> i've got brain fog today tweezers i think they're tweezers aren't they goodness gracious i was talking about talking about that um linda says she has those they're very good because they're long um because you can only do so much yes i was talking to my brothers about uh oh terrible memory my 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 dad oh, he's 94 he's got a terrible memory and he said that we all uh, have inherited it from him. But I, I think it's just an age thing. I don't think he can be blamed <laughs> for our appalling memory. Yeah. Somebody asked me earlier something that about yesterday. Was it Jackie? Yes. Yes, it was um, our Jackie. And uh, she asked me something. And I said, I can't even remember what I did yesterday. Never mind Friday. So... <laughs> Right, here we go. We've got all sorts of bits going on in this stuffing because it's been all over my workroom floor. So put in as much as you, you, you want to. These aren't much good, really, for getting stuffing in. I mean, they will move it about. But if you want to get into the real nitty gritty of things, <laughs> my lizard feeders will um, go right up to the top there and I can manipulate them. Look, I can open and close my tweezers to um, and put them, you know, I can, look, you can see I've pushed those shoulders out and uh, the hemostats will do it if they're, if they're long enough or you can get them in there. But the, these are, are much better. So that's filled that out nicely. Just give her a little bit of, uh, of shape. And then let's give her a bit more stuffing in her bottom half it's surprising how much stuffing they take actually you'd be surprised but use an old pillow or you know or wadding wadding scraps is good for these sort of things i mean you could fill it with um, essential oils um you know put your essential oils into your into your stuffing and then um you know manipulate it um and then that'll uh, distribute the oils um put lavender in there there's all sorts of things you could do. You could you could make the make it a little bit heavier on the bottom with some sawdust or that's that type of thing. Um, but uh, gosh, she's got a great waistline, hasn't she? I'm rather envious. Um, so there's lots of different things that you can do. So now we've got to the stage of we've got our, our raw edge at the bottom there. Now, in the pattern, I've said to you, please don't worry about the quality of your stitching now, because all of this is going to be um, kind of uh, covered up. I'll show you in a sec. So make a make a knot um, and then just literally you're going to catch the other side. Do yourself um, a seam allowance. You know, do you roughly quarter an inch, but just do a slip stitch. And it doesn't have to be massive. Sorry, it doesn't have to be tiny. It can be, you know, quarter inch. You know, don't don't. Uh, worry about the quality of your stitching now if you want to gather it up a little bit you can because um, the two points um, either side of the straight edge are going to be put together you'll see that in the pattern so just bring them together you can see how roughly I'm doing this real quick and just come to the end there Looks a bit lopsided, but I'm sure it's fine. Just catch that one. OK, and um, in the so that's what it looks like. You've sewn the bottom up. But in the pattern, what I want you to do is to keep hold of your threads. Don't cut it. I just want you to then pick up the other side. So where you started. So I want you to pick up the other side. So you've literally got, um, you know, like a loop of fabric. Can you see? And you and I have used strong cotton um I think this is perle cotton actually so i've used strong thread because you're bringing that together to make a nice um gathered bottom so a little stitch just to hold that together another little stitch there 
um, and secure that. I mean, it will have a load, load of glue on, which reminds me, I will get my glue gun ready. See if it switches on. <laughs> silly, silly glue gun. <laughs> I've got another one on standby. But that isn't switching on at all. Honestly, I'll, I'll get the other one. Right, so um, yeah, just finish that off. If not, we can just use some um, fabric glue just uh, as a temporary fix. Well, let's pop, oh, it's switched on now. Whoa, green light. <laughs> <laughs> so you can put this on your cotton reel now or you can embellish it and then put on your cotton reel um, later. So what we'll do is we'll we'll dress her with her ribbon and bow. Uh, oh, that's a sticky bit. Let me just get one of those. Let's get, the, get that off. So you can do these um, separately if you want. So you can put this on and make a really lovely... Um, uh, you know waistline okay or you can do it in one go with the bow so if I go and you want a decent length don't stint this is about an this is an inch let me just measure on the mat yes it's an inch wide um, so what you're doing is you're bringing your two ends together this is double sided you can see one side is shiny one side is dull so we're going to just do a normal knot and you can move this when it's done. So if it's not quite where you want it to be, you can move it. And now you want to fold this over so the shiny side is facing you and make a loop. OK, this one we've got to twist because we don't want a, a shiny loop and a dull loop. So when we wrap this round and pull it through, we want um, we want to twist it. So wrap it round so you've got the shiny side showing. And then as you poke it through, then you want to, like I say, you'll, you'll get to know how to do this, but pull your ends, I'm perhaps a bit short that end look, and if you twisted it, you'll have two lovely shiny sides. And with single-sided satin, it's very, it's very difficult to get that effect because you need to, as I say, twist it as you tie it, okay? So give that a nice pull. Keep keep manipulating so pull your ends pull your ends pull your bows and you're tightening it all the time pull your end pull your end and tighten and that's actually it's going to work out perfectly fine to cut it I want you to fold your ribbon in half and I want you to cut from the I'm going to turn it I want you to cut from the uh, not the you have you I'm going to say this wrong if I'm not careful you want your folded edge on the top and your two um I'm going to say raw edges on the bottom so fold it in half so your folded edge is on the top and you're cutting towards your bow from the raw edges in if that makes any sense and then you get a v look at that it's beautiful and then so if I do that again, so fold it in half. OK, let me just do it so it's better for me. Fold it in half. And you're cutting from the edges of your ribbon. These edges here, not the fold. And you're cutting towards your bow like that. OK, whoops, Ooh, crikey little twizzle there so look at that that is just beautiful absolutely beautiful so I'm happy with that but I think we can do with some embellishment so I'm going to add a couple of little buttons here um, by all means use hot glue please don't um, get hung up about stitching um, you can obviously use a fabric glue it's fine anything like that is just absolutely fine just <laughs> you'll end up with glue all over you um, let's try another little white one and again just make a little posy of the buttons okay can you see I think that's lovely and then we've got our beautiful little wraps of ribbon and so let's put a little bit of hot glue on them and we'll put one there 
and set one there. Be careful you don't put that, well that's up to you, it, it, it might go through onto your body and so your lace will be secure but it's secure on the seams anyway so you know not not too bad. Um, then at the top here I think what I would like is a paper flower. Oh I've got this one look at that that's just the delish. So a paper flower I'm going to put it where my embroidery is but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some um, oh let me see mauve yeah I've got mauve We've got mauve in the embroidery. So, lovely, lovely, lovely thin ribbon. This is um, probably eighth of an inch. Nice thin ribbon. And you're going to forget that it's fabric. You're going to just treat it like you would if it's... Um, they're too small. Uh, hold on, I'll just get my other pair. Um, you're going to forget that it's fabric and you're going to treat it like paper so um, you could do this with the curling tongs as well and you're just literally going to give it a curl and it will go just needs a little bit of manipulation a little bit of telling it who's boss there we are but you want to trim these little bits off at the end look at that that's absolutely gorgeous so you can let me just hold it so you can see the difference hold on I've got glue everywhere. You can you see how that looks? And then you're going to do the same again. So you know you might want to hold one at a time. I've got two in my hand, but you know. And if it frays at the end, that's why we always cut them too long. Like, let's get it. There we go. No, nope. yes, I did. Um, so that goes underneath the flower. So. Fold it, in, fold it in half, so you've got four ends coming down. Okay, can you see? Four ends. Get your flower. I'm going to put it there. So I'm going to put it on the back of my flower. So hold it all down. I wonder if my hot glue gun is switched off. I think it has. I've got just enough, I think. I need to switch it back on again if it if it will. Sorry, my head if my head gets in the way. Oh, yes. Um, so just make sure all of that sticks. You're, not, you're a nice big dollop. There we go. Pop it on her shoulder. Don't worry about the fact we're covering up some embroidery. You mustn't worry. There we go. Look at that. That's beautiful. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, I love it. <sighs> it gives me joy. Um, <laughs> and then we just need to attach it to our cotton reel. Now, if you've it, with this cotton reel, what my mum did is that she wrapped it in the little groove here, so I can't use, so I can't take it out. If I was to put, you know, I could, could get my lovely um, daisy trim here. Oh, if I can get hold of it and if I'm very very careful I could hot glue that around but I'm going to lose the end of my thread okay so maybe that's something I don't want to do so what I could do is take it out and you could get a needle I mean, I wonder if I've got a needle handy hmm. not sure I've got a big needle hold on hold on let me get this big needle oh. Hold on, hold on. Doesn't want to play. And you could, I mean, this is a rather large needle, but you can thread it like you normally would, just so you've got an end. And then you could wrap it around like that. You could put some glue on that as well if you want to. Wrap it around your cotton reel, which of course has come unwrapped, so bear with while I just wheel that back in. And you could then just pop the needle in. Hold on, there we go. And that will secure it. And you could put a little bit of glue there just to hold it. It depends how precious you want to be. And then you could use your little daisy or whatever, your lace. I've got some gorgeous lace here somewhere. I don't know if I've, I could put my hand on it. Um, 
no of course not but you can have a little piece of lace I can't find it that would go along there and it would look absolutely stunning um just wondering if I've got time to do that what do you reckon it's beautiful isn't it I rather like it should we give it a go so literally use your hot glue be careful of your fingers and just slowly go around don't try not to get it on your thread if it's thread that you want to use you know just just be just be mindful of that um, because this is still all stuff that I can take off the reel if I want to I doubt that I will but you know I might in years to come <laughs> and then just snip it there we go and just tidy it up just so like I say be careful of the thread oh that fits look at that fits an absolute treat and then that needle can be the front of your design yeah so with that in mind let's just try and get that tail out of the way I'm going to pop that flat onto my desk I know you can't see it very well at the moment and I'm going to get my my base and I'm going to give it a really good load of hot glue um, fabric glue should be fine uh, the Gutterman I think it's Gutterman T2 isn't it uh, any sort of fabric glue will be fine just be liberal um, because you need it to be secure so then all I'm going to do is lay that on top like that and just push it in so I'm pushing it down okay I don't know if you'd be able to see better on the side let's have a look a little bit let's just move my gun out of the way so if I bring that across so all I'm doing you hold it straight uh, I wasn't straight there for a minute and just give it a second for the glue to take um, and then it should be fine and there we are there we are so that's our mannequin made isn't it glorious I wonder if I could if you can see it better if I put the tablecloth behind it because it's a bit busy on my table there we are <laughs> I don't know if she looks a little bit wonky there let me have a look oh no it's not too bad it's not too bad so there we are oh, I think she's gorgeous I think she's absolutely gorgeous and of course you can do so much more with her you can put um, like I say French knots on there you can add to the embroidery here you could put more bows on the skirt uh, let me just bring it right up close so you can see more buttons you know the world's your oyster isn't it get all those bits and pieces out of grandma's tin and uh, and go to town but I think um, yeah I'm gonna love having these next to me in my room but like I say my mats on the on you can see it's on the wonk um, and it will stand up perfectly fine on there yeah ah, so there we are that is Mimi so what I'll do is I've got a lot of stuff on my desk <laughs> let me bring my machine in because she's a good height my machine hold on just bring her in stand her up there there we go so now I've got three. Oh, actually I need glue around the back I'm glad I saw that let's see yay yeah she's she needs glue on the back I wonder if I've got enough in my glue gun I, I tell you what's I tell you what's happened the label has come away from the cotton reel I'm thinking oh I'm sure I put enough glue on there but you know there was a DMC label and that has lifted I never thought about that I thought that would be well and truly stuck oh that's better there we go oh she's gorgeous so have a look at all those um, bits and pieces that you've got right two things two things firstly don't forget 9 30 on a Monday morning I always show the latest um, making it Monday project as a little sort of um, sort of pre pre look what's the word a sneaky peek <laughs> as to what's coming later in the day also I still have in our making it Monday in the shop in the making it Monday shop I've still got all the digital passes June July August September October November December I've got 
seven digital passes for three pounds and the links for those digital passes are still on the making it monday page in featured so you can still buy those for three pounds and you'll get all the patterns for that month so um I think June and July you get five and then all of the rest of the months you get four. So you get however many that is, uh, Making It Monday projects um, and they're all three pounds each. So if you missed out last year, if you're a new Making It Monday person and you missed out on last year's projects, then look at the projects that are... Um, there's Tea Party June, so have a look from there. And like I say, you get um, four, if not five, for each month. So those digital passes are still available. I haven't taken them off the website yet. So they are an absolute steal, really are. I mean, 125 for the pattern anyway is, is fantastic, but um, you're getting um, all well four patterns minimum for, for three pounds so excellent value so don't so do take advantage while i've still got them in the shop i'll probably get rid of them fairly soon right so there we are so that's our making it monday for this week um and you've got me next week as well i do believe um so um, i haven't uh, any ideas what that's going to be but uh, we might still be on the theme of sort of pretty sunshiny daffodilly flowery sort of projects because that's what january is all about something to brighten our spirits and to, to lift us up and hopefully this has been that this evening um thank you ever so much for your company it's been an absolute treat as usual um just trying to see if i can see um any more comments that i need to answer if not i'll have a quick scan through afterwards and uh and um, see if there's anything I've missed. Uh, there must be four or five hundred comments on there. So anyway, I'd like to see some in the Making It Monday group. That would be amazing. I'd like to see your take on it. And I will see you next week. Um, she's been at your sherry list. Well, because it was a bit wonky. Yeah, well, now I've realised it was the label that <laughs> moved, not me. <laughs> I think, is she still li listing? She might still be listing. Yeah, she's had a snowball. Um, so for those of you that are in my online sewing group, I will be live in the group on Thursday. So I shall see you then. If you're not one of my members, then I'll see you next Monday at seven o'clock on.